Patrick McNeil back here on the broadcast at the intermission and joined now by John Keane, the voice of the Kamloops Blazers and also host of the WHL this week. So he's well versed keeping his tabs in the Western Hockey League and the announcement comes down. They want to start the season January 8th after originally saying it was going to be December. Tell us about this new start date, John. What prompted the change from December and is this a concrete date? Are they fully committed to it? I think, first of all, the wording they used was firm start date. We hadn't had that before. There were two other dates, but they were simply targets. So they put this one as a firm date. The last date before January 8th was December 4th. But logistically, that date just didn't make a lot of sense. When you factor in all these kids will come in and then what? You play a couple weeks and then you shut down for Christmas. This allows them to be more on par with the NHL schedule, whatever that will look like January or February. And it gives them an opportunity here to bring them in after Christmas with a training camp a short one mind you and then get going on that january 8th day looking around the whl talking to your colleagues and fans and media do you get the impression there's optimism that this is going to happen are people skeptical about it a lot of people want to hold on to something right they just want to be able to hang their hat on something and you could put me in that category too you're optimistic but you're well aware of what's going on out there in the world especially with some rising covid numbers so thankfully western canada has done all right although there's been some concerns with raising cases in manitoba and saskatchewan two places that were virtually unaffected in that first so-called wave there are a lot of people watching what's going on with the numbers even in the province of bc we're seeing some numbers that were up toward the peak of what we had in april and march and that's about 150 130 cases a day so there is some concern that if the numbers keep increasing here what it'll be like for the general public or billet families players but right now there is optimism What's life like in BC right now in terms of the restrictions? How much can you or can you not do that would relate to the act of going to a hockey game? Right now, there are restrictions of buildings of 50 people in hockey rinks, right? So when you factor in two teams, coaches, you're already at that 50. There's no fans. There's no attendance. There's nothing like that right now. Granted, there is some runway here to try and figure something out. For example, in Saskatchewan, their junior A league will open with 150 fans, a small opening. For sure, but a bit of a start. There continues to be a lot of discussion behind the scenes just how fans will be allowed as the WHL is looking for 50%, which seems a little optimistic if you want to use that term again. But there is some sort of wiggle room. They hope that they can somehow factor in fans through assigned seating. I know we chatted and the system you talked about with the, the zones and the exits and the bathrooms and everyone sitting in their own sort of a pod it seems to make great sense. And, and there's ticketing companies now that are trying to accommodate things like that for a January open, but right now, Patrick, everything remains in the hands of the health officials for sure. You're looking at six different governments with the WHL, four in Canada, two in the United States. You get the impression there's been much discussion with governments about funding because in the queue, maritime teams have fans and it seems like the Quebec teams are getting by because they're getting funding without having fans. There is a lot of talk behind the scenes, but we're told there's been no formal application for funding at this point. I think because they will look at the situation if fans aren't allowed and how much of an economic impact that would be. And at that point, I think they would go and look for funding. But some of the higher ranking power brokers of the WHL aren't exactly holding their breath for funding in BC anyways under this provincial government. You keep in mind there's two provincial elections on the go right now in the four western provinces in Saskatchewan and BC. So now is not exactly the time where governments are hard committing to that, perhaps maybe when the dust settles as far as, as that goes as we did see Quebec get some funding so there's a little bit of leverage there perhaps but I don't think anyone's counting on that I think the overwhelming thought was that teams were going to take a significant loss this season and that the owners were really stepping up to try to provide a, what looks like a developmental league season ahead in the queue we've seen an issue where very few teams have imports there's very few American players in the league how important are American players to the Canadian teams in the WHL and you get a sense that that's been sorted out as to whether or not guys will be able to cross the border to play with their teams there isn't a lot of American players with the Canadian based teams here there are more American players based on the Portlands and Spokane's of the world in the U.S. division which will help them out significantly but you're only looking at probably on average one American player per team as far as the Canadian WHL franchises go but the imports is another question question altogether here. One saving grace is that if you have a high-end import, there's a chance that once World Juniors are complete in Edmonton, if they're on their respective World Junior team, they can just stay in Canada and then go to their club 
club team of the WHL. That's best case scenario. Again, a lot of question marks remain on will imports be coming overseas? What will it look like in January? What's the quarantine period? But I think you're probably a little safer if you have an import on one of those world junior teams that will compete at Edmonton. We see a bit of a different look to the WHL. Traditionally, four divisions, two with six, two with five, and everybody kind of plays everybody. But it's going to be a little bit different this year, I understand. Walk us through that. So they've gone to basically four divisions, which they have now. They combined Saskatchewan and Manitoba. So what they had was Swift Current, which is in the southwest corner of Saskatchewan. In the last couple of years, have played in the central division of the Alberta-based teams. They will keep Saskatchewan and then pool them in with Manitoba, with the Brandon and the Winnipeg franchise, and play as an east division. Alberta will be one division. BC will be one division. And then you have the five U.S. teams, and the five U.S. teams will combine, like they normally do here for the uh, U.S. division. Yeah, so interesting, three of five and one group of seven, but we've learned that everything is a bit unusual in the year 2020 when yeah. it comes to playing sports. Well, that's great insight, John. Best of luck to you and everybody out west getting your league off the ground. Hopefully we'll have more junior hockey to talk about come January. Yeah, you bet, Patrick, and thanks for all your help really being the guinea pig out there as far as how you're going to look at a situation with how it's going to work. A lot of people are looking at the Quebec League and, and seeing how they can make it happen and definitely keeping an eye on those COVID numbers as well. Very good. We hope that they get lower, and that would be great for everybody. That's John Keane joining us on the broadcast, walking us through how things look for the WHL season. You're listening to McDonald Auto Hub, Cape Breton Eagles Hockey on 1270 CJCB.